Okay, so I wanted to do a my GM today, but time was not on my side. Some things happened I didn't see coming. But we can still talk about the top five NBA players as it makes sense because we've been going through the top five at each position. So we might as well talk about who we believe are the five best players in the NBA overall, counting last season going into the 2017 season. And I think number one is pretty obvious across the board. LeBron James. I mean, the performance that LeBron put on in the NBA Finals against the Golden State Warriors, simply amazing. An all-time performance, down 3-1 to a 73-win team. I mean, you can go look at the numbers he put up in that series, and effective on both sides of the floor, of course, the block shot on Andre Iguodala with two minutes left of a tie game in Game 7. One of the best defensive plays in the history of sports, let alone the NBA. And LeBron, I mean, I know his jumper has fallen off a little bit, but when you're that good at driving inside and finding teammates and posting up, and I mean, he's LeBron freaking James. I don't need much of an explanation. Number two, I'm going to go with Kevin Durant. And for a while, I would have said Steph Curry at number two, but the reason I'll go Durant number two is because Steph Curry, I mean... I mean, let's be honest, his performance, these playoffs, especially in the NBA Finals, were a little disappointing. But also, Durant, um, he's a better defensive player, in my opinion, than Steph Curry. Durant's actually a very good defender. I mean, if you saw him against Golden State, his on-ball defense, as well as his um, ability to protect the rim, was really impressive. And then, of course, the guy is all-time great when it comes to his offense. And I think uh, when you look at Durant's ability to post up, he has gotten that Dirk Nowitzki uh, turnaround jumper down. And also his isolation ability, I feel like that makes him just a little bit more valuable than Steph Curry. I mean, of course, Curry's ability to shoot off the dribble and when he's healthy, we assume, finish inside. And I mean, Curry, he's he's an okay defensive player. And, uh, I mean, he's still a decent rebounder and playmaker, which I think people forget about sometimes. They think Curry's just a shooter. But I'll still go Kevin Durant, number two, and then I would go Steph Curry. Number three, again, Steph did not have the best performance in the playoffs. Now, that could be a matter of his health as well as a combination of, in the postseason, you're allowed to be a little bit more physical on defense, and I think the Cavaliers were just beating up Steph. Whenever he would run around screens, they were putting elbows into him. But also, they attacked him on defense. I mean, whoever Steph was defending, it seemed like that guy was in the pick and roll against the Cavaliers. And it really worked for the Cavs. Um, So, I think Steph ends up at number three. Number four, I'm going Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi is um, the best defensive player in the NBA. One of the best defensive players we've seen in a while. And if he continues as he is, and he plays defense as he's been the past two seasons, and he does this for... I don't know, a six or seven year stretch, which is a lot to ask for, but I think he's capable of it. I think Kawhi could go down as one of the best defensive players in the history of the NBA. I'm talking like Scottie Pippen level of defense because Kawhi really is that good on that side of the floor. And then on offense, the guy's efficient as all hell. I mean, he shot 50% from the field, 44% from three while averaging 21 points per game and I've said this before with Kawhi, I'm still waiting for him to develop that ability to just say, all right, everybody get the hell up out of the way, give me the ball, and just let me win this game for us. He hasn't done it just yet, and that's a combination of San Antonio having a very good system offensively, but also Kawhi's personality is one he doesn't want to get in the way of others. Hopefully we see him develop that this season. I don't think he's afraid because, I mean, we've seen him go toe-to-toe with LeBron James in previous NBA Finals and make a pretty damn big impact. But I just think his personality holds his scoring back just a little bit, but he's still a great shooter from everywhere. He finishes well at the rim. He can post up, which is cool. I think next season I'd like to see his playmaking get a little better and just up that assertiveness a bit more. And, um... I mean, I think he will, and I think he deserves to be number four because, like I said, best defender in the NBA, potentially the most efficient player in the NBA, averaging over 20 points per game. I mean, it's kind of easy with that one. Number five, Russell Westbrook. He's a crazy person. He's a maniac. He may legitimately average a triple-double this season. That's not a joke because Kevin Durant's gone, and we saw what he did when Kevin Durant was injured. Um, What was it? 
two seasons ago, whatever it was, uh, Russell, we saw how effective he was against Golden State, forcing that series to 3-1 because his ability to just push the tempo is just wild. I mean, no one has an answer for that. The way he can jet up and down the floor, his fearlessness going to the basket, he's pretty damn strong as well. And of course, in the half-court setting, he can beat anybody off the dribble and... All it really takes for Westbrook is an okay screen, and there's a pretty damn good chance he's going to be finishing at the rim, and the defense is going to have to deal with it. And I feel like Russ has gotten better over the years of just being a good playmaker. He's not a point guard who's going to make sure the offense is running correctly, and he's not going to be a quarterback. He's going to be like, give me the damn ball, I'm going to attack the defense, if someone's open I'm going to pass it to him. And you know what, he's so damn good, I think it's okay. Now Russ... He does have his mental lapses. There's going to be the occasional bad three-pointer. There's going to be the occasional dumb layup. He's going to mess up on an assignment on defense sometimes. You just got to accept it because on the other end, he'll grab some like flying rebound or he'll get an offensive rebound and a putback. I mean, the good outweighs the bad with Russ, but you still have to deal with the bad. As for a couple other guys, um, Anthony Davis... He was ready to become the best player in the NBA this season and win MVP. Unfortunately, uh, the Pelicans' injuries and then some. I don't think Alvin Gentry did the best job in the world. I still think Anthony Davis is right outside of the top five, and he's got a chance to find his way in there. But as of right now, I'd put him maybe six or seven, whatever. Chris Paul, he's up there as well. I think Chris Paul uh, is potentially the most all-around point guard in the NBA because... He's a better defender than both Steph and Westbrook, and very efficient from everywhere. He's really tough, but um, it's tough to make the top five. Uh, James Harden, he's got to get better on defense. That's a pretty obvious one. DeMarcus Cousins, look, I love Boogie. He might be my favorite player in the NBA, even though I've never said that before, but I just realized it. It's really tough to put you in the top five when you've never made the playoffs, and... Does the situation around him suck? Yes, it does suck, but it's still the reality. I think he cracks top 10, but it's tough to make top 5, man. Paul George, I mean, Paul George is great. I think his field goal percentage suffered from Indiana's offense being really bogged down and having a lack of shooters. Hopefully it'll be better this season. A very good two-way player, but... um. That field goal percentage is ugly, man. I can't lie to you. I could say the same thing for Blake Griffin, Clay Thompson. It's like, great players. I'd love to have them on my team, but if I got to pick five, LeBron, Durant, Steph, Kawhi, and Westbrook. So there you go. 